Let's talk about this uh, Dynamite show. And uh, if we have time, we'll talk about uh, NXT as well. And uh, we'll have a lot of time tonight. Vinny and I are back, AEW and NXT. A lot to get into on both shows. Opened up with uh, AEW had a graphic for uh, Jay Briscoe as well as a sign-off about Jay Briscoe at the end of the show. And uh, NXT even did a cut-in to the announcers. And uh, they announced the passing of Jay Briscoe on that show. Orange Cassidy beat Jay Lethal to retain the Atlantic title. It's, it's an Orange Cassidy match. There's always high jinx, but there was extra high jinx in this match because the story on this show was that if uh, uh, the heels came out, Jarrett, Sotnam, and Sanjay, and the story was if Sanjay interfered, he would be fired. Or if anybody, any of the heels interfered, they would be fired. So they keep trying to interfere, just furiously trying to hit people with guitars, and Sanjay's trying to stop him. And uh, Orange Cassidy won with the punch, and then the heels hit the ring, and apparently they weren't allowed to touch him after the match either, because Dutt's trying to put a stop to it, and uh, finally they uh, they bailed, and the best friends stood tall there at the end. Do you think it was a little bit of a rib, the amount of steps that they made the Giant and Jeff Jarrett, who's 55 years old, walk down? I mean, those were a lot of steps, wasn't it? No. There's steps, for that. there's steps in every arena, brother. With his big-ass feet, you know, the giant trying to lumber down those steps. Oh, man, if there was no handrail, it could have been just dangerous. We've got uh, Top Flight and the Young Bucks, which was a, I thought by the end, a very, I would say, I was go as far as say a great match by the end. It was, uh, I don't know, it was weird. It was like, early on, it was just kind of there, and I wasn't really blown away by Top Flight. But then they did some great near falls there at the end. And uh, and when they finally avoided, Darius avoided the BTE trigger and uh, rolled up Matt and pinned him clean. Holy smokes, this place went crazy. And it's funny because, I don't know. I mean, I had people, you know, there was someone on Twitter going, Tony Khan, listen to this show. And it's like, Tony Khan did not get this idea because we talked about it. We talked about it because it was patently obvious what should be done, which is why he did it. Not because of us. I mean... Top Flight needed a win. The Young Bucks are the trios champions. Top Flight can beat the two of the trios champions. They can then get a partner, have a trios championship match. And then, you know, usually in these cases, it's like, you know, uh, this happened actually with, uh, you know, when, when Top Flight threw out Claudio from the Battle Royal. They got a big win, but then, of course, it led to a match where they were beaten. Well, in this case... Yeah, they're not going to win the trios titles, but they bring in A.R. Fox, whoever. He gets pinned in the trios match. They've got a win over the Young Bucks, but they never, neither of those two ever got beaten. So it helps to elevate him and it gives him a big win. I like hey, it. We were right, okay? And that's not the only time we're going to say that on this show. The Gun Club came out, and long story short, Billy Gunn prevented a fight and announced that next year... They will sit down for family therapy. This sure felt like the setup for a WWE segment, but... Dr. Shelby! We'll see. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hey, he's a free agent. You never know. Hangman did a promo with Renee. She don't like this guy, but she's a pro. Wait, and, you don't know uh, that. Hangman, Hangman that? when it was over, they did, uh, they did act like they left the camera running, and Hangman said, you know, how's he really doing? And she said, he'll, he'll be all right. And then they're they're continuing the storyline. Hangman now, now's the time. He needs to make amends with the young bucks. God. But he's an anxious millennial cowboy, so it's going to take a while. It may take till prom. It really, really. Renee, can he come out and play? I mean, can we have a play date? Can he be my? No, friend? no, no, Mike. It's not even that. He can't ask her for the play date yet. He wants to, but he's like. Mrs. Bucks, can I? Uh, hey, I'll see my school tomorrow or something like that. He hasn't, he hasn't asked the question yet. Mm. Ricky Starks beat Jake Hager, as one would expect. And not only did he beat him, but all of the uh, Jericho Appreciation Society hit the ring afterwards, and he still bailed through the crowd and uh, escaped. And he did this two down. There's like more it. to go. Yeah. And then uh, Jericho, Garcia, and Sammy are furious backstage. And uh, Jericho says, next week, 
We're going to make this right. I want to match me and Sammy versus Action Andretti, this orphan, and uh, and Ricky Starks. And Garcia says, you know what? I want to team with you, Chris Jericho. And Sammy goes, awesome. Hey, that's a great idea. That's why I want. I want you to step up. So I'll make you a deal. If you can beat Action Andretti on Rampage, you can take my place in the tag match next week. No spoilers. You'll have to watch Rampage to find out what happens. Mm. And then Guevara's got new ring gear for Garcia. I don't know why it was so funny, but he holds up this ring gear. And Chris Jericho's like, he's totally in character. He's late sex god or whatever. And he looks at the pants and he just totally goes to character and goes, is that leather? <laughs> he's great. Wow. Man, those are cool pants. Oh, my God. You know, uh, another thing about Jericho, he was so proud of himself when he gave himself a new variant by teaming with Garcia. Yes, Garcia Cho. Then we had a match. Let me tell you, Brian Danielson and Bandito. You know, this Brian Danielson guy and Bandito. It's one of those matches where I, I, I watch everything on delay. I'm on the West Coast. All I heard about for hours was how great this match was. It was even better than my expectations going in. They had such a great match. And, you know, I mentioned this on uh, on to my super followers and on Observer Radio last night, but this is just the weirdest damn thing because Brian Danielson is undoubtedly a babyface. Everybody loves him. They don't like MJF. The storyline is the only way Brian Danielson will get MGF for a one-hour Iron Man match is he must beat all of these men. Yet everyone he gets in the ring with, they're like rooting for the other guy to win. I thought they misstepped here. I did. Well, here's why. I think there's somebody else. And this is a nitpick because I'm not going to complain about getting this match for free on Dynamite, but... I would have liked to have seen Bandito also just wrestle somebody, showcase his wares, get a huge victory, and then be posed as the threat for any title, even though he's not in a feud right now. I do love the fact that he had a great match with Danielson, but, like, I think Danielson really could have had a great match with somebody else, done the exact same thing, and you could have also gotten Bandito over with a big win as opposed to doing what they did. But I guess maybe in that realm it really doesn't matter either. You know, uh... You ever had, like, a turtle as a pet? No. No? No. Yeah. No. I haven't either. But you know what? They're they're kind of dumb. They're not really very smart animals. Oh, no. Or, you know, yeah, I know people like dogs and all and cats and everything like that, but they're not they're not really very intelligent either. People will argue that, like, their dog's as smart as they are. And, you know, for some of the people on my timeline, they're probably right. But anyway, you know, you see an animal, <clears throat> you see an animal do something dumb, and, uh, you know, it's just like, ah, eh, this poor stupid animal, you know, whatever. Like, you can go online and Google, like, silly things cats do. Silly things dogs do. You see these animals doing all these stupid things. And what do you do? You, like, laugh. You know, God, look at that dumb dog. What a stupid cat. That cat thought it, was, it fell in the water or whatever. So anyway, you don't get mad at the animal. You don't get mad at the dog, right? You don't get mad at the cat. Well, I bring this up because I don't get mad... And a lot of the fans on my timeline, okay, they're like turtles, which probably, I'm, I, it's probably, uh, you know, I feel bad I said that about turtles, the poor turtles. But, you know, one thing I see on, on the internet all the time is, you know, you, you put over the best of seven or whatever, or this and that, and then, you know, these, these, these hadros, these, these peanut-sized brained hadrosaurs on the timeline are like, oh, well... Of course you like it. It's all moves. Or they'll go, was there any wrestling? Because, you know, they, they think that, like, these guys, they just, they only do moves. Can you guys just listen to Observer Radio last night? And listen, and it's like 1.25 a.m. I'm so tired. And Dave has to start going on and on about how, you know why I like this match? You know why Dave liked the match last night? Why? Well, because a lot of Bandito's matches are nothing but moves. And goddamn, this one was so much better because it wasn't just a bunch of moves. It was like they told a story and they went back and forth and they did this and that and they did they did less moves. <laughs> you 
Yeah, I spent all that time to get to that point. And I don't care. But you know what this match wasn't? It wasn't just a bunch of moves. It was two awesome pro wrestlers having an awesome pro wrestling match with... It did have moves, but also storytelling, and there was a point to the moves. And they did this move for that reason, that counter for that reason. God! It's almost like they know what they're doing. Was there a reason for your voice modulation there? I mean, who fired you up? Because it's not back yet. Who fired you up? And then MGF comes on screen. Oh. And he does a promo. Because apparently, this poor bloke's been on the board. Don't do that, Max. Don't go on our board. No. But anyway, he says, I've heard all the criticism from these fans, these fickle fans. Now they think I don't deserve to be here. Well, you know, yes, there has been a fair amount of frivolity of late, but you know what? It's been my mask. And that mask is slipping. And you don't want to see me when this mask slips off. Yeah, we so saw you run away. Shifting. So. Let's see. They're, he's trying to move away, clearly, from this... Uh, Tough guy. This running away character. That, hmm. Yeah. And then he meets with Brian Cage, and he goes, I got this money. Yeah, see? This This I didn't get. He goes, I got more money in this envelope than uh, Brian Cage and Prince Nana I've ever seen in real life. It's yours. I don't care if you win next week against Danielson. I don't care if you lose, but you have to break his arm. But then he gives him the money. Bro, I know you got a lot of money and all, but you don't give him the money until after the arm's broken. They're going to be out there in Vegas, you know, living nah, it up. And Brian right, Danielson's going to have two arms. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Storm beat Willow Nightingale. The gist of this is Tony Storm and Soraya are now heels. They are ex-WWE wrestlers who think these AEW stars are in the bubble and have never done nothing. And they're heels. And uh, and it's going to be, it appears, because they've dropped the, they've dropped, this is like a, almost like WWE branding. I've heard the term homegrown talent so many times that clearly we're building towards homegrown talent versus the ex-WWE stars, which is interesting because that would mean that if Mercedes ever does show up, she's showing up as a heel. And uh, I, I have no inside information, okay? But, you know, a lot of fans are looking at this going... Blood and guts. And they've never done a female blood and guts, right? I don't think they ever have. No. And uh, and this sure would be the way to do it, if that's what you're going to do. Hey, we were right. This is the smart thing to do with having those outsiders. Also smart to add Ruby. And then the main event was Darby on Kushida. And uh, I don't see this doing, like, particularly well in the, uh, in the quarters, but... Man, what a great match it was. Kushida looked awesome. Darby's great. They had a fun match built around the arm. Darby finally beat him. They shook hands. That was it. But did you know that in January, WWE presents the Royal Rumble on the show will be what is being called a pitch black match. Why, you ask? Well, Mountain Dew apparently has a drink. Called Mountain Dew Pitch Black. And they got a lot of money! If it's all blacked out and nothing happens, we're actually the winners because, you know, we don't have to actually watch it. Jared, put a black thing on the screen here. It's It would be like if the match was like this for 10 minutes, and all you heard was, Oh! Ow! Boom! Uh, uh. No, Mike. Stop it. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.